Here's a short explanation of the classic card game, Euchre. Euchre is a trick-taking card game commonly played in Australia, Canada, New Zealand, Great Britain, and the United States. It's played with a deck of 24, 28, or 32 standard playing cards. Normally there are four players, two on each team, although there are variations that range from two to nine players. In this video, we will only cover the four-player game. Fun fact, Euchre is the reason that two jokers appear in the standard deck of cards, but you won't need them for the game. To play, you'll need the standard deck of playing cards. Remove all of the cards eight and below, with the exception of the fives. None of the lower cards are used in the game. Euchre is a team game and teammates sit across from each other at the table. One team will be the black team and they will take the two black fives. The other team will be the red team, and they will take the two red fives. One member of each team will keep the two fives. They are used for keeping score during the game. Place one of the fives face up, and the other five on top of that card face down. For the deck, you are left with the cards nine through ace, four suits. In Euchre, the values of the cards are much like you would expect for a normal deck. Ace is the highest, while nine is the lowest. The cards are shuffled, and then five cards are dealt to each player. Traditionally, the cards are dealt three to the first player on the left, two to the second player, three to the third player, and then two to the dealer. Then around again, two to the first player, three to the second, two to the third, and then three to the dealer. The remaining cards are called the kitty. Place them face down in the center of the playing area and flip over the top card. Players now look at their cards. Players do not discuss what is in their hands. It's also known as table talk, as you should not indicate to your partner what type of cards you have. Players must now decide, looking at that face-up card, if they wish for that suit to be trump. Making a particular suit trump changes the order of which is the highest card for that suit. A suit that is trump also is better than any other suit in the game. The team that calls the trump must win three of the five tricks. If they win three of the five, they will get one point. If they win all five tricks, they will get two points. But if the team that does not call the trump wins three out of the five tricks, they will get two points. Here's what happens when a suit becomes trump. The ace is no longer the highest card. It is now the jack of that suit, also known as a bower, followed by the jack of the opposite suit with the same color. Then the ace, king, queen, 10, and nine. So, starting with the player on the left of the dealer, they will need to decide if they want that suit to be Trump. If they do, they say, pick it up, and the dealer will get to take that card and put it in his hand. He must then exchange it for one card that is already in his hand and place it face down on the kitty. If the first player does not want that suit to be Trump, he says, pass, and the decision goes to the next player. The process repeats until it comes around to the dealer. If the dealer would like that suit to be Trump, they pick up the card and exchange it. If they do not want that suit, they then flip over the card. If that happens, it now goes back around to the first player again. They can now, if they wish, choose any suit other than the one that was on the face-up card to be the Trump. If they wish to call a trump, they announce which suit. If they do not wish to call, they say pass. And the process repeats until it gets back around to the dealer. When it gets to the dealer, there are two variations of play. The more traditional is that the dealer passes, all cards are returned to the deck, and there is a redeal with the player to the left taking the deal. The other way of playing is called stick the dealer. If it gets all the way back around to the dealer again, they must call Trump. It's not exactly fair, 
but it does keep the pace of play moving along. Once the trump has been decided, the play for the hand begins. The player to the left of the dealer chooses one of his cards and lays it face up on the table. The next player will follow. If they have that suit, they must play that suit. If they do not have that suit, they can play any card in their hand. This repeats until the dealer puts down his first card. Now we will see which player has won the trick. If there are any trump cards in play, the player who played the highest trump card would take the trick. If no trump card has been played, the player who played the highest card of the suit that was led takes the trick. Any cards that were not of suit or not trump would automatically lose. The player who won the trick would take the four cards and place it in front of them. Now whoever won the trick would lead out the next card, and the process repeats until all five cards have been played. At the end of the hand, the team that has won the most tricks will get the points based on how we mentioned the scoring just a little earlier. The team that scored moves the top card of the two fives to show one of the suit symbols. This indicates that team has won a point. The cards are now all returned to the deck. The player to the left gets the deck and shuffles, and the process repeats. The first team to win 10 points is the winner of the game. There is also another option when players are deciding on what the trump will be if a player thinks they have a good hand and that they can take all of the tricks, they can call the trump and say, I'm going alone. When they do this, their partner places their cards face down. They will not play in this round. The round is played as normal, but with only three players. If the player who called trump wins three tricks, they will get one point. But if they can take all five tricks, they will get four points. There are a lot of other variations and traditions associated with this game, but these are the basics that will help you get you going if you are a beginner. So get together with a few friends and give it a go. Now you know the basics, let's play.